Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Vee. In this video, I'll be talking about how to write a CV for a biomedical science research assistant position. I'll first give an introduction to how recruitment works and therefore how to shape a CV according to what your employer wants, how to come up with a bucket CV, how to refine your CV, so things like vocabulary choice, layout and style, and also my personal sample CV that landed me my current job as a research assistant at Cambridge University. So before we get into how to write a CV, we need to first understand recruitment. It's easy to start any job application with what you want, your qualifications, and your experience. But really, the starting point should be addressing what your recruiter wants and needs. When an employer is recruiting, they're essentially taking a risk. Hiring the wrong person could mean that they're stuck with an employee who hampers the work on an ongoing basis. And if they decide to reappoint, it is a very time-consuming and costly process. So as the applicant, you need to make yourself less of a risk by showing that you are capable of doing the job and also trustworthy. There are three main criteria that employers generally look at. Eligibility, suitability, and potential. Eligibility is the first criteria that employers look at, so do you meet the essential requirements to do the job? This is usually things like education qualifications, experience, and skills. If you do not meet the essential requirements, you will not be shortlisted into the next pool. So the next criteria is suitability. Will you fit in with the team? Do your values align with the company or the institution? And also, what do you say about your own motivations? And finally, the least important of the three criteria, potential. Employers are always interested in what you can achieve in the coming years, and the best way to predict this is often from past achievements. And additionally, what are your personal plans of achieving success in the future? So that's recruitment in a nutshell. So now on to writing a CV that will land you the job. A CV, which is short for Curriculum Vitae, is a factual summary of all of your skills, qualifications, and experience that help tick the right boxes to send you into the next interview stage. It is meant to be clear and concise. Research has shown that it actually only takes 7 seconds for an employer to decide whether or not to accept or reject a job applicant's CV. But before we get into the nitty gritty of how to write a CV, content is key. And this is where we create the bucket CV. First, what you need to do is open a Word document or grab a pen and a piece of paper and brain dump. Write down what you have done, where and when, your achievements, skills and examples of where you have used these skills, and positions of responsibility. To help kickstart your bucket CV, you can use subheadings, and here are a few that are more specific to biomedical research. So education, lab experience, internships, skills and abilities, so things like lab techniques, analytical skills and languages, positions of responsibility, awards, extracurricular activities, or volunteering work. It is key to collect as much evidence as possible. This means drawing on any of your past experiences that you deem are relevant. For each experience, ask yourself, does this meet a competency requirement of the recruiter? For example, showing up at 6am for sports practice or signing up for volunteering work is a sign of ambition and commitment. Getting a code to work or writing a scientific paper is an indication of analysis and attention to detail. Some of the qualities a recruiter often looks for in the field of research include analytical skills, attention to detail, teamwork, organization, written and verbal communication, and problem solving. It's important to be as up-to-date as possible in your CV, so include everything that you can think of. And going slightly off tangent, if you do decide to include your LinkedIn profile in your CV, which I would recommend, make sure that that's up to date as well, just in case the recruiter decides to cross-check. Don't stress out too much about your bucket CV. This isn't meant to be structured in any shape or form. It's purely for your own reference and you won't be sending this off to the recruiter anyway. It's just useful to have when you're drafting up your actual CV in where you actually need to be more selective and prioritize certain experiences. There are generally two types of CVs, a chronological chronological CV and a skills-based CV. In a chronological CV, you list out your qualifications with the most recent item first. It's more traditional and conventional and it allows for the recruiter to jump to the point that they're most interested in. A disadvantage to this is that if your most recent experience isn't very related to the current job that you're applying for, it may not put you in the best light. A skills-based CV, on the other hand, is where your experiences are organized by theme, more specifically the key competencies that are required for your job. This can be advantageous if you have less work experience and you would like to include include things like extracurricular activities into the different subheadings. However, this is not as common as the chronological CV, and sometimes recruiters just prefer something that is more classic, and they just want to see your experiences up to date. If there's a lack of story or coherency in your CV, the recruiter may think that there's something that you're trying to hide. So what often works best is a combination CV, which as the name suggests, is a combination between the chronological and skills-based CV. 
So you can start off by listing your education and also lab experience in chronological order. And the remaining sections can be skill-based with subheadings like analytical skills, technical skills, and communication. Now let's talk about the qualities of a good CV. In this section, I'll include examples of my own CV, but by no means am I trying to say that this is the best example. I just picked out a few sections that I thought have worked in my favor. A good CV needs to be concise, and this means that your choice of vocabulary is very important. One way to be concise is to start off each bullet point with a power verb. So it is unnecessary to say something like, I was involved in a research project and I looked at the role of necroptosis in chronic kidney disease. You can just get straight to the point. And the example I used in my CV was investigated the role of necroptosis and fibrosis in ischemia reperfusion injury of renal allograss. Another example I used was developing a deep conceptual understanding of outflow resistance in glaucoma through literature reviews. In this case, I said developing in present tense because that was the current project I was working on at the time. For a list of power verb examples, universities often include this in their CV guide that's actually accessible to the public. If you're not sure where to access them, I've linked just two different universities in my description box below. The next quality of a good CV is that it needs to be evidence-based. So it's not enough to say that you took on this role or that you possess this skill. It needs to be backed up with evidence. Often, having numerical evidence helps a lot. So for example, I said, raise 150 pounds for the Lebanese Red Cross Beirut Fund by offering personalized digital illustrations. And the next example I use, which is under the subheading of one of my final year projects, I literally just listed out my grades for my project. Sometimes it's not always possible to give quantitative evidence, in which case qualitative evidence is fine as well. So an example that I used in my CV was, utilize CRISPR-Cas9 to genetically engineer Whip1G RNA plasmids for transfection. This is evidence of what I did in the lab. Another example is analyze Sanger sequencing results using SNAP gene to verify that transformed bacteria have contained the insert with the correct gene sequence. By mentioning the name of the software I use and what I was using it for, it is evidence that I have done this. The next quality of a good CV is that it needs to be selective. So if you remember the bucket CV that I mentioned earlier on in this video, now is the time to use it. Because the CV should only be one to two pages max, you need to prioritize and be selective of what you decide to include. You should choose to mention the experience that is most relevant to the job description. For example, if the project has something to do with genetic engineering, pick out an experience that you have that's most relevant relevant to this. It doesn't need to be an lab experience if you don't have that. It could be an essay that you've written or a course that you did online or just some personal reading. Just try to build something and tailor it to that specific job. And if you're unsure of how long you want to make your CV, a general tip is that if the employer doesn't specify, just make it two pages, but nothing longer than that. If you are a fresh graduate and most likely lack work experience, I think it's better to do two pages to just prove that you have the transferable skills necessary to actually grow in the job. Now on to some quick don'ts. Do not use first pronouns like I or we. It just sounds unprofessional. It makes the whole bullet point lengthy. Just be concise, get straight to the point, and use power verbs at the start of each bullet point. Next up is do not abbreviate. Your recruiter will most likely be skim reading through and if they get to an abbreviation that is not common or they're just not familiar with, it's just a hassle to go back and search for it and you automatically end up in the reject pile. Obviously, common abbreviations like TNA, PCR, or E. coli are completely fine. And lastly, do not forget to proofread. Your entire CV should be completely error-free, so double, triple check for any spelling or grammar mistakes. Now finally, on to making your CV look presentable and professional. In short, a good CV layout should be well-organized, consistent, and well-spaced. My first tip is to bold or capitalize subheadings. This makes each section stand out, and it's clear for the employer to quickly identify the section that they're most interested in. Avoid underlining, using italics, or even highlighting because that's just less pleasant on the eyes and it disrupts the general flow of your CV. Bullet points. Always use bullet points. Do not even think about writing an essay in your CV. It's just too much text, it looks crowded, and no employer is going to read that. Also, only use one bullet point style throughout your entire CV. Using too many different types of bullet points to subcategorize different subheadings, it just gets a bit complicated and messy. As for fonts, choose a font type that is clear and also well spaced out. 
ideally one that is very similar to what the organization uses. I personally like adding two different fonts to sort of distinguish between subheadings and bullet points, and I tend to like to mix up one serif font and also one sans serif font. And that's it for this video, I hope you found some of it helpful. If you're interested in things related to pursuing a degree or a career in biomedical science, please like and subscribe. I post research vlogs and also sit down videos like these to just chat about all things biomedical science related and I try to cover a decent range. So that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!